you can hardly go into a public place where there is not some Christmas music playing. And while we have every person so dogmatically insulted about the mention of God or Jesus anywhere the rest of the year, go in a public place, you cannot escape Christmas music. And after a while, you tune it out if you can. If you do like me, I just pretend it doesn't exist. But I bring this to mention because um, I do things backwards from everybody else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I. You know, we, we, we seldom read uh, about the birth of Jesus. Really, for, for us who study the word here, it's not that we don't read that passage, but not much is said because Jesus could have obviously been born and lived, and had he not fulfilled everything that the word declares he would, every part, every single prophet, everything that pointed to him, but most importantly, his death and resurrection. He would have just been another child born among many children who in that land expected perhaps their son would be Messiah. But we seldom take a look. And I was reading through these uh, early chapters of Luke, and I said, I'm I'm going to highlight something, I think, which uh, will make us look back at this nativity, which everybody gets real spiritual about. Uh, Luke chapter 2. There's something that I caught my attention. Of course, we have the, the birth of Jesus in verse 7, Luke 2 and verse 7. And in verse 8, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. It's kind of interesting that this is the whole declaration. Fear not, good tidings, which I, I really wish it wouldn't read that way. The real uh, word, you've got that, it's a long compound for the evangelion. It's a little bit uh, different ending, but the same root. Good tidings, just has a, it's too English. But anyway, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, I want you to capture the picture of these shepherds out there by night tending their flock, and all this is happening around them would have been quite a scene. With the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I'll get back to that in a minute, the goodwill part. It came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing. That's a terrible translation right there. See this thing. Jesus, they call Jesus a thing, which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now, let me stop right there. You notice that the common message when you go out in public places around uh, what people label as Christmas time, which isn't Christmas time. The common message is always, you'll p hear people say, goodwill, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That's the 
message of Christmas. Everybody says that, right? You've heard people say that? The message of Christmas. Well, how about this? How about heaven's first word to earth after the birth of Jesus? Fear not. I want you to think about that. While everybody gets wrapped up in all the warm, coddly, cuddly, uh, you know, goodwill toward men, which most people don't even practice, don't even know what it is probably. First word, first, heaven's first word to earth after the birth of Jesus, fear not. That'd be a good Christmas message if people were going to preach a Christmas message. Forgive me, I always have to stop myself because I once was extremely caught up, like many of you perhaps, in uh, certain traditions. So it's very hard for me to separate the two, although I understand perfectly well, like most of you, Jesus was not born in December. I don't think I want to even defend that tonight. That's not the subject. But it's too bad that people are not reading that first message. Fear not. And what's equally striking about this is go back and read this real carefully. Angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. I, I, it's almost so simple. You can imagine these people out there tending their flock which had not seen in their generation and in their time anything like this. And we reference the glory of the Lord in, in modern terms. We always speak of something glorious, but it says they were sore afraid. And I'm thinking too often this is taken very lightly, uh, like a caricature. But the same reaction, remember when Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up? And the whole temple was filled, and he, he was sore afraid. He cried out, woe is me, a man of unclean lips. The, the real reaction to this uh, incredible spectacle, and there's, I wouldn't just say Isaiah is the only one that reacted this way. Many in the Bible have that same reaction. So I often feel this passage has been caricatured. But there's something I wanted to point out to you, which as I began to read it, I saw something I thought of great importance. The first message, fear not, from the time of Christ's birth. And then, you know, because we've, we've covered that ground so many times in so many passages, I began to go cover to cover. And remarkably, you know, to Abraham, God said, fear not. Genesis 15. If you keep following through each of these personages through the Bible, you will find that there is a repeated message over and over again. To Moses, fear not. To Joshua, fear not. To Daniel, fear not. You go through the whole Bible, and you'll find that this is constantly being said right to the end to the seer on the Isle of Patmos who's stunned at this appearance. And it's the Lord Jesus speaking to him who's instructing him to write. And he says, fear not. I'm the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, telling him he possesses the keys to hell and death. And I thought, you know, too bad that the message being proclaimed is not fear not. A good message if we were going to raise the banner for people to latch on to a concept that Christianity, uh, that first message after the birth of Christ has been a message straight through the Bible consistently of God encouraging his people essentially to say, I'm here, I'm with you. I once did a message with the, the with us God. The same words going straight through the Bible. And then the remarkable thing, go down to that goodwill. I had to look that up to make sure. I wasn't even sure if 
in our modern dictionaries of goodwill. But from the Greek, eudokia, which is, you like this, good thoughts. Obviously, the prefix you, good, can be good thoughts, satisfaction, delight, and kindness. And please don't tell me that most people do that all year round anyway. Ah, it is true. I hate to say this. I mean, it is true. Around the time when uh, people are saying it's the holidays, you'll find people are maybe a little bit nicer, just a little bit. And that it's, 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 only, it's like a limited time offer. <laughs> it only lasts for, you know, until January 1st, and it's back to being a miserable grump. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Well, the other thing I want to point out, because I'm going to come, I'm going to take you back to the, the fear not in a minute. The other thing I want to point out is the King James translators translated where it says, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing. You know what's remarkable? The thing they're translating thing actually in the Greek is the word rima. And I thought that was the most staggering thing, which the, the rima that was said was spoken by the angel. Remember we taught on that, that the rima are those sayings of God, those declarations, where it's written, where it's proclaimed, versus other uses of the word logos for word, which also can be referred to or referring to Christ. Remarkably, when it says, and see this thing which has come to pass, really, they were going to see what was spoken. And you talk about a, a faith action. These people had never seen anything like this. I mean, we read this and we're so familiar to reading these passages that you just saw, yeah, sure, they were out there tending the flock and, you know, great light and glory came down and an angel spoke to them. That's just an everyday thing for us, of course. And I want you to really catch this because the proclamation of what's told, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And proceeds to say, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And they, they after this whole spectacle takes up into heaven, they say, let us go now unto Bethlehem to see what's been said. You know, I think, I don't want to go by this too quickly. Because there's a real connection with me to this whole proclamation that's made, something incredible that's never been seen, and they say, let us go. Let us go. And when, of course, they came with haste, I like that. They didn't lollygag, came with haste. Most of us would just mosey on down, and, well, you know, take a leisurely trip to Bethlehem. You know, we get there when we get there. They made haste, found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, there's the word again. I want you to see sometimes the tragedy of translation. The saying is the rima. They went to see the saying that was said. I know that's poor English. But I'm trying to paint a picture for some that say, how do you go about that beginning concept of getting to God's word and hanging on? Well, these had... These had something to go and see, and they went. We've got a whole Bible to walk through. Saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. You notice that God always picks the least likely proclaimers. For the resurrection of Christ, he has the women there at the tomb. For the announcement 
of the birth to go and announce and make known just these simple shepherds. I love all of this, but it really comes down to if I was going to look at this message, I'd say the first message, fear not. I wish somebody would declare that's if there's a, such a thing as a Christmas message. First message, fear not. And then simply following everything that's said here, the wonderful message of the proclamation by these simple men going to announce, going to see the thing, the saying that was said. And some of us, I'm sure, will see this and just see the story, but I want you to take hold of something. The message of fear not through the Bible speaks to us today to simple people, to just plain people. And the same principles are still applied. The sayings which we reach into to stand firm on, we go to see by faith. We walk by faith. We go to see the thing that was said. In our case, let me take you from this passage right here, which is fear not, don't be afraid, to the declaration that these who went to see the saying that was said. Let me take you to what I superimposed on this, which is go to Hebrews. Because the same concept of making an application when we say we are to apply something. Hebrews 11, where it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Divide up into two parts, things hoped for, future, and things not seen, present. Things hoped for, a deliverer, a savior was hoped for. And then suddenly, the things not seen were seen, realized in the incarnation of Christ. And I'm saying to you, looking at this same concept I just took out of Luke's gospel to make an application for those people that say, okay, but those people had a word and they even had a vision to go with the word. But how much more do we have? Things hoped for, future things that are, that is, Promises not yet obtained. How many hundreds of years were the people awaiting a deliverer? Were they promised a deliverer? Things hoped for. And we live in the realm of things hoped for still as we walk by faith, claiming promises. Let's take the, the big one that everybody staggers around by, healing. And let's just take that one example because it's the, it, it is the one example of the many rimas, of the many sayings of God that are in this book, the things hoped for future, you may say, to be healed, the realization of that promise, the things not seen, which are the minute you grab hold and say, this is how I am appropriating it, not just... I, I hang my body on it, but I take the entire word of God. And like those that went to see the saying, although they had a vision, we have the whole revealed word put into action. Things hoped for, not yet accomplished, not yet received, a future thing. And the not seen, which is actually in the present which actually exists in the now awaiting your faith like those shepherds, those simple people that went to see the sayings, awaiting your faith to become reality. Now you may say, well, that's, that's great if you just talk, but what if you have a need? That's how it's appropriated. Now, until you come into possession of something, until it is fully belonging to you. Think about Jeremiah. He said he was going to send money to buy a piece of land. Things hoped for, not yet seen. The whole book reveals that, and it's a pattern for us. Now, the one thing that's 
a little bit different in the shepherds since they had that vision. Something appeared to them, but they didn't yet have the full revelation, which we have, and a better understanding. So when people say, what should the message be while you're walking by faith? The first message from heaven after the birth of Jesus, fear not. While you are walking by faith and you cannot yet see the realization of God's word and his promise, fear not. Now I, I sat and I read that Luke chapter 2 and I looked at each of those words and I thought, too bad that the message to the church, instead of goodwill toward men and peace on earth, fear not. For those of you who are walking by faith who have not yet obtained, who have not yet had the realization of the thing hoped for, fear not. Now, I can't think of a better, if there was a Christmas message, than that. A message to the church, the message to you who are still wrestling, walking through the promises of God. Now, we, as I said, we have the full revelation. I taught last week on Abram. He didn't have a clue when God said, leave your country, leave your kindred, pick up and go to a place that I'll show you. Hope for, but not seen. I wonder how many people would just today do what Abram did. Pick up, if God spoke to you, if he spoke to you, many people say he speaks to them, if he spoke to you, and said, leave your country, leave your kindred, leave everything, get up and I'll, I'll, I'll show you the place you're supposed to go. And guess what? He's still telling the same message to the church, except he does it through the same full revealed word. And so many people don't even want to take the risk, if you will, because until you're ready to have the confidence that God has settled the matter, the word settled in heaven, you're not going to do exactly that, which is things future hope for, not seen, but God said it, so I'm going to stand on that. To Abram, he says, fear not. To the church, he still says the same thing. I could take any any personage, any person in this book and say the same thing. Uncertain, they didn't have any road map. Read that whole passage here. We have all of these people who, by faith, uh, the, the one that strikes me as the most incredible, if you will, of all of these, is the one we, we know the least about in Hebrews 11. Enoch, we know the least about him. He's in this passage. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That's all we know and very little in Genesis. Except this, God told Enoch to name his son Methuselah. Be the oldest living person. And... I think he had Methuselah while he was 65 and lived 365 years and gave that name, meaning when this child dies, I hate to call somebody who's 900 and whatever a child, but when Methuselah dies, the end, meaning the flood, and see the thing future hoped for and not seen the grace of God to remove and translate and take Enoch that he didn't see death. Yet, you say, well, how could that be? And he didn't have a certainty of anything, except in the naming of that child, that the end would come. Noah likewise. He only had the saying of God to do this thing according to the word that God had said. They'd never seen rain. They'd never seen a flood. And I'm sure they'd never seen anything built like this monstrosity that he was building. And yet, he takes that word, 
He must have looked like an absolute lunatic in building this ark. And yet, that's, I hate to say this, that's what a lot of us may look like to other people while we latch on to God's word by faith because he said it may look crazy to somebody else. But it's the things hoped for and not seen. And yet, the not seen is in the now. It's just waiting for us to act on God's word. And these, by the way, all had remas. God gave the instruction to them. God gave them a word. God instructed them to do the following. For one, it was to leave country and kindred. For the other, it was to build an ark. For the other, it was to name a child. And for us today, it's the full revealed word. So I take all this and say, I'm trying to encourage some of you who have been wrestling to get back that grip of faith, to get back into those practices, the practices of faith, which is you keep reaching and you keep grabbing hold of the word and you don't let go. Fear not. And we know these all died, not having obtained the promise that we have. So how much more encouragement? The child is born, a message to you today. Keep claiming God's promises. Keep latching hold of the remas of God and fear not. The same God through the Bible is the same God that's with you right now. Malachi says, I'm, I'm God and I change not. Stand firm on that. Between that word and the word settled in heaven, there's only one thing waiting for the word to become the now seen. You being the conduit between the word being said and reaching up and appropriating and taking it as the conduit between heaven and earth. That's all your faith activated. So hopefully some of you will begin to practice the habits again. And while you're in the process of holding on, fear not. God is with us. Get on the telephone. <laughs> To 